what's going on welcome everybody justin or just notified armand path the peculiar podcast episode number three well we, we back. back we back Third episode we back a little hiatus, but we back well, you know a little hiatus it's been a little busy holidays it's been, it's been real busy actually real yeah. busy so so at, at, as again um as always i should say you know we we've already had most of our conversations um, off the air and and some of the things we want to discuss and i think today's topic is going to be you know uh passive income side hustles you know what i mean how we're going about it um uh, just various ways that we've either experienced and or heard of uh, when it comes to 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 coming up on some side hustles so the okay. thing the topic of discussion lately jay flu just notified is it's been reselling yeah and as you know i just sent off my first amazon fba shipment That's on friday right on. and i've been i've been i've been checking my track uh tracking my um my mm -hmm. shipment mm -hmm. at least every hour since yeah. i sent it make it's sure they got my inventory it's gonna be a little bit yeah, what's some of the things I should expect next once once it hits the uh, from from your perspective once it hits Amazon's warehouses? What's what's kind of the, the things that I should expect next since you got a lot more experience doing this? Yeah, um, now I'll say just keep monitoring your uh, the actual tracker itself, but it should send you emails to update you every time that number one once your shipment arrives. And then Amazon is going to have to go through and start unpacking everything. So it should update you once they start unpacking everything. And then when it's completely fulfilled and you have all of your products in place where customers can actually buy them and they're yeah. in the store can be purchased, then they should send you that final update. So from that point, then it's going to be, you're going to be obsessed with looking at the Amazon seller app, just waiting for something to hit. So basically what, what I just heard you say is this going to take me even after they get it at least a few more days i can start making this money yeah so like, yeah it, it takes them a little while to go through and sort everything and then organize it and put it in the right storage spots but once that happens they should update you and then um you'll, you'll see that your items are available for purchase and then like i said in that in the amazon seller app you could just kind of track that and see what's going on with the listing there's a lot of times where maybe the price or the buy box changes because other people are on that listing and maybe they're adjusting prices, but then you can go in there and make those edits if you want to. Okay. And, and yeah, so, so the reason we kick it off talking about Amazon is, is that um, uh, just notified has been doing the reselling stuff for, for quite some time. And, and, uh, and I'm just now getting started. And, and when we're talking about side hustles, my initial expect expectation or initial goal that I've kind of set internal to my household and kind of what I'm uh, hoping to accomplish with uh, this reselling is to my first mark is about if I can make five hundred dollars five hundred dollars extra a month um, I call that self uh, call that a, a victory or yeah. you know, is that yeah. that's my near term goal so so what I what I started with was we went around our house looking at stuff that we had made may, may have purchased in the past but never opened. And, and my initial investment is just that it's it, it's stuff that we already had so my wife had um a subscription for like women's like face care stuff and and so i took she had a whole box full of the stuff that she hadn't even used and i started scanning them through the amazon seller app and next thing you know i noticed I'm like dang this one's 89 dollars hits on it 48 dollars this one's 36 dollars so i was like okay cool well yeah. that's my initial investment right there she spent 25 dollars on these boxes monthly for for a few months and then they had a, a bunch of and, and and she'd get you know a couple things out of that box mm -hmm. that was worth the amount of the box that she would already be buying so it was really it pretty much paid for itself uh already and so so my initial sale of all these items will be 100 percent profit yeah uh, so that's kind of how i'm getting started it could have easily gone and thrown a thousand dollars towards inventory but i chose to start it the slow way so i think with me setting a goal at 500 dollars a month yep. it's an extra side hustle and so so if, if you had an extra 500 dollars a month just notify what would you do with it put you on the spot yeah. a little bit, but i mean an extra 500 dollars. i don't know i mean there's a lot of stuff that i could do with it but you know when we're talking about our plans investing and all of that that probably be a quick throw into some type of stock or 
yeah something like that try to get a little bit more return off of that but yeah i mean for reselling purposes themselves and you know i i just dropped my video today about my reselling experience uh because i just started actively selling on amazon in october now before that maybe like two years before that i started selling on ebay but i did the same thing that you're talking about which is why i love reselling as a side hustle because you don't have to have any money to get started whatsoever and yeah. go to your house find stuff like you mentioned you're not using it it's 100 percent profit so i love reselling but if i had an extra 500 dollars, i'd probably just keep reinvesting that money into getting more inventory and trying to build out that base a little bit more yeah that's that's a bet and so with me that that once i hit that first mark every, everything would be 100 percent reinvested into more inventory mm -hmm. um hitting up my ross my marshalls the coles uh some of those uh more bargain yeah. shopping type of places and then just start start flooding with more and more inventory 100 percent investment um yeah. probably every time and so you know or 100 percent reinvestment every single time and so uh, also uh, for everybody listening and watching um the video that uh, just notified just dropped today that the link to that will be in the description should you want to uh, partake in that so I, I know i frequent and watch watch the channel the, the the videos on your side on your um your per, your personal page all the time so i know yeah. i can't wait to watch this one good look i appreciate that um yeah no for sure and i think you can have a lot of fun with it from my experience reselling and a little bit of backstory of what exactly we're doing so you know you can go into a store you can go online find an item, buy that, and then sell it on a different platform for a higher price, make money off of that. Essentially, we're using Amazon right now. You can also use eBay. Those are the two main platforms that I use. Um, but since I've been doing it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun because number one, you learn a lot about different brand names or just different products that you otherwise would never, ever know about um and then it's something that you can manage on your own time you don't have to put any money into it up front you know to your point you just grab stuff that was already lying around the house and you could throw that in make bread off of it and then keep on reinvesting it um but it's a lot of fun once you get out there and start hunting some stuff it's a lot of competition though too a lot of people are reselling on the platform so that's something else that you'll see but um from my experience and i know in our circle because uh, i know zach lowry uh, I know Killer Drill, both of them are uh, resellers as well. So we all get to kind of put our heads together and share experiences that we have and what we're seeing out in the market. Um, but it's really competitive. But we've also found better ways to source quality items where there may not be as much competition. So I'll be glad to go into all of that once you get deeper into it. But oh, man, just it worked. Worked. No, now, now we're ready. Yeah, I can't wait. And 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 you, uh, Zach Yang. Killer Dro, y'all been a wealth of knowledge. And so I think having just for everybody listening, having people in your corner around you that you can pick up the phone and call and just say, get some advice from that may be a little bit further along in the process that you, than you are is it, it, extremely valuable. So I, I know when I was, uh, after I was scanning all the different uh, items that we had that we're going to sell, and I hit you up and I was like, hey, man, what I got to do? All right, you t hey, go into that app, click the, you know, start scanning yeah. these, uh, those, those barcodes. Um, start start adding the image, listing them, and then just the steps and the processes. But I appreciate you for sure. uh, providing that information because I mean that first time, even though now that I look back at it, the the process seemed to be pretty straightforward on how to um, you know identify something, list it. Yeah. But then when you're in the moment, you're doing it the first time, and you're exploring a new a new app. I was like, man, this is a lot of buttons. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, for the first time when you just get into it, it can be intimidating for sure. And so if you have people that you know that are already doing it or you have some type of resource you can go to to find out what button to push, where to go, what to enter, all that stuff, absolutely do that. Because for my first time when I was going through it, I mean, I strayed away from Amazon because I was intimidated by the process of going through entering everything and then shipping it off to them. Because with eBay, I store everything in my house until it's sold. So having to learn all that was it took me a while to even get started. But, you know, I applaud you for just diving into it. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. And and, and um, 
relatively stress free from the not from the user perspective. That was kind of a little could be a little stressful starting off. Right. It was a little stressful trying to figure out what buttons click, make sure I ain't wasting my money and sending it to a, a random place. Right. Um, but 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 the main reason why I just chose to use you know, items in my own home is that uh, that we've already had already purchased and um, that had just not used was that that initial that's it that isn't still an investment because at some point in time we have spent money on that but yeah for sure um, I, I i'm most excited about the learning process yeah uh, before i hit the ground running i, I think i set a reasonable goal of you know five hundred dollars a month but while i'm trying to get that five hundred dollars of extra side hustle money a month um i'm just i'm just treating this everything as a learning opportunity how to go out and search uh, items for my inventory yeah um, it will get me the best returns um, and, and, and it, once, once I started looking for items to sell, I started realizing like, man, this, the, the economy we have is kind of amazing. So like, when you look at it, if I go to Ross and I find a Tommy Hill figure shirt, yeah. just using that as example, example, a Calvin Klein shirt, something like that. Right. So Calvin Klein had made their money. Ross done made their money. Mm-hmm. I may be able to make that, make some money off of it. Amazon's obviously going to make some money off of it if I'm selling it on their platform. And then the yeah. person consuming it still may or may not get it for for cheaper than what they've seen in other stores. And there's they may obviously they're probably going to be satisfied with that product if they're going to go out on their own and buy it. And so there's there's a lot of hands yeah. um, in between when it was first manufactured. I forgot the manufacturer when it's first manufactured all the way to the consumer. How many people can s- take a slice of that pie? And so oh, yeah. that's that's kind of interesting to me. And so yeah, uh, that's the one thing that. I've always been amazed by, and I wish that I could track the lineage from something that I've sold up until I I bought it, and then after I sold it, what happens to it? Because, yeah. like I said, I started off just doing eBay, and the only items that I would go and buy just because I didn't want to spend any more than like five to ten dollars on on any purchase I made, so I would just go into thrift stores and. You know, you can go into thrift stores and find some pretty incredible things, which, again, I was trying to figure out how did it how did this item make it here? So I had a and I put this on my Instagram a while back, but this is probably my like my biggest success story of thrifting. But went to a thrift store and there was a a Lacoste sweater and you could tell it was vintage. It was like a heavy cable knit sweater. And I saw that they had it for three dollars in there. And when I looked up on the eBay app and I was running comps of similar items that have sold or that item in the sales history, I saw people selling it for 150, 120, 90. And I was like, there's no way. So, of course, I bought it. I listed it. Now, it took a while for this item to sell. I was probably holding it for maybe four or five months before a buyer came in and purchased it. But when a buyer did come in to purchase it, they didn't send me an offer or try to negotiate. They just bought it straight up. I think I had it listed for like $120. And so they just went and paid that plus the shipping all in. I think they paid something like 150, 160 bucks. Um, But I noticed that the, the buyer was some type of retail store in New York. So I'm thinking, they purchased it and then they're reselling it. So they're going to mark it up. So it's always amazed me the lineage of um, how an, a product or item gets somewhere and then what happens after. Right. And and that, that to me, that's that's amazing. That's that's the an economy at its works um, right there. And so, you know, when, when you start to look at it, right, how much time it takes to do some of these things. And it doesn't seem to take I mean, just from my my experience, obviously, with my experience, I haven't. I didn't go out to the stores and source my items, yeah. identify something, and then come home and you know enlist it. Um, I skipped the first part. Well, for me, if I did you know an hour or two every weekend, um, which is an hour or two to find yep. inventory, source, and send it off, yep. um, or list and send it off, and I can make potentially up to upwards of a thousand dollars a month. For some people, that's their mortgage or their rent. Um, yes. That's their, their car note there, um, and and that's and that's it. It doesn't take it takes little to no startup costs, right? And, and that's the crazy part about it. Obviously, if I was to start with a thousand dollars of inventory right off the bat, obviously I could probably scale it a lot faster. For sure, one hundred percent. The inspiring part is that you can take little to little to nothing, right, and start a business with it, 
um, slash side hustle that could bring you money that could pay your bills that sure. can you know feed other investments or that's the yeah. part that I like most about it and and it, it's something that where it's what you put into is what you can you you can get in return so so if I want if I if I have the money and the time to spend spend hours in the store finding uh, niche and 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 um and and high sellable items uh-huh. I can do that yeah. And then if I 100% reinv- if I don't need this $500 or this $1,000 today and I need to and I want to reinvest it into inventory, I can yeah. keep scaling and growing and growing and growing. And obviously you're going to have some losses. I'm sure you've had items that yes. didn't sell. Um, yes. You still haven't sold. Right. But I feel like, you know, as you grow, as I get as you get better at identifying those items that are um, you selling like hotcakes. That will probably min- minimize those, I you know those those um. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, and that and that's all gonna come in time. Like you know, once maybe you um get something and, and it fails where it doesn't sell or it doesn't sell for the price that you were thinking that it was gonna sell for, then you learn from that and you start tweaking the types of items maybe that you buy or you look at different data points to see is this a good item. But all that's gonna come in time. Um, but I, I think that a couple things when it comes to reselling that I really like to me, it doesn't feel like work. Now there's, there's certain aspects of it that do feel like work when you're having to package everything up and get it ready and send it off. Like, yes, that's going to feel like work. But when you're going out to source items or you're in store online and you see some crazy deals that, that pop off and then you look at what they're selling for on Amazon, like sometimes it's unreal. So that part to me, I thoroughly enjoy. I still to this day have not felt like I've worked when I'm reselling at all. So I think that that's pretty cool. The other thing that I really like about it is, and if any of our friends are going to watch this, they're going to laugh at me because uh, when I use the term active passive income, I don't know who I heard that term from, but it's the only thing that I can say to describe this type of um, business, I guess. It is active passive. And what I mean by that is, when you first start up, of course, you're just trying to get as much inventory into Amazon or list as much inventory on eBay as you can. And you're not going to see a lot of returns off of that. But once you start getting all of that into the facility where, where customers can actually start buying them, then at that point, I mean, you can literally be watching TV or playing, you know, on the sticks, playing a game, and then your phone start going off and you see that you're starting to sell stuff. So um at a certain point it does become more passive after you get your inventory in the works and you kind of have that baseline of product for people to buy so that's the other thing i really like about it yeah so so it's the work is front loaded it's kind of like teaching a course and putting it up on a on a on a learning management system or something like that and you selling your course like you you did your work already yeah. now you sit back and, re- and reap the rewards of uh, of, of your work you can and you can make more you know plenty of money off of that and I, I coined those um those type of efforts and those type of side hustles semi pass semi passive and yeah. um, yeah. I, I, when I start to really think about it I mean I guess there are some passive incomes out there but there's not many incomes or side hustles that ain't go that's gonna be a hundred percent passive I think in a way that's kind of a misnomer um I, I think okay w- when you get a rental property even doing a getting a rental property at some point you've had to do some type of work you've had yeah. to go out looking for a place you've had to um you've had to kind of run your numbers mm-hmm. you, and, and and even if you have it managed by somebody else there's going to be some interactions things that you're going to have to have which are with your property management company and that's yeah. hey the air conditioning is out now you're going out and finding which they may go out and may go out and find an hvac company for you but you're going to have to do your due diligence to make sure that what you're spending your money on is is is, is a sound investment and sure. and so either way it goes there's some type of work but i'll call them semi-passive because maybe for the for the vast majority of time you're not doing any work you you uh you do a little bit of work and then you 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 kind of benefit off of off of that work later yeah um, for sure yeah. I, I would much prefer that even if you're putting a lot of effort in up front and that i think to your point that applies to most everything like there's something you have to do to get to the path of a paycheck just getting sent to your mailbox and um but i would much prefer that versus me staying on somebody's job for an eternity 
And so based off the work that I'm doing, then they cut me a check. But I have to continue working to keep getting that check. Like there is no passive part about that. So I think if people get in the mindset uh, mindset of trying to start something or entrepreneurship or business or side hustles that could eventually grow into something else, that can turn more into passive versus, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to sign off on my check every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do we do have friends that that's that's kind of replaced their main hustle with their side hustle. And, and, and one that comes yeah. to mind is Joe Dro when mm-hmm. it comes to uh his reselling, right? He that's, that's, his, that's his hustle. So he 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 get out, he wake up, get on the sticks, get on the get on Fortnite, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Out, right there. Yeah. And and that 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 to me is powerful. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm trying to make you know, I'm trying to have enough side hustles coming in to where those those become my main hustles and yeah. I manage my time how I want to manage my time put as much into it or as little into it as I want um you know be kind of the holder of you know my own destiny when it comes to that to the to, to my income you yeah. want to share you want to share some of your uh before we we ca- wrap up the uh the reseller part you want to share some of, some of your best months oh yeah money. yeah so so this this was in a video that I just dropped but um it, it didn't take me it didn't take me long to start turning a profit selling through Amazon. Now the reason why is I did invest some of my own money up front. So I, I didn't I didn't start that grassroots like going through my house and stuff. A couple of years back when I started on eBay, that's what I was doing to generate some of that income. But for Amazon specifically, I started in October of last year. And so I invested uh twenty five hundred dollars of my own money into it just to get items to start sending in and, and try to start flipping those. But um, I'm sure because of the time of year, November was my best month. So that was obviously going into Christmas. So people were just going crazy, uh, buying everything off the platform. Uh, so I made a little bit over 5,000 net payments from Amazon and eBay combined in November, which that was wild to me because again, that was, that was my second full month uh, selling on it. So it was wild. Yeah, and see that that's if, if you if you can have um that type of run rate for from an annual perspective, that's sixty thousand dollars net that you're able to you know add wow. you know, on a side you know, hustle. Yeah, and that's that's yeah, that's a that's a hell of a side hustle, if you would mm-hmm. ask me. Um and so I, I think that to that to me is 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 amazing. So I mean kind of talk in the same same breath when we're talking about these high side mm-hmm. hustles. I know my next effort outside of this reselling is gonna be um, I say I say we talk. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this this real estate, and then we can finish with our content. But um, sure. I, I think the next the next side hustle that I'm really really excited to get into is my first rental property. Yeah. Um, so kind of been looking at options and running numbers and and uh, and just kind of figure out what's gonna be the best um, investment for for my family. And that's that's my next side hustle slash semi passive income. Yeah. That I'm looking forward to. Yeah, man, I can't wait. And so Dude. starting to be able to merge some of these different efforts, and it might be a little bit here and a little bit there, but together and 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 a hundred percent re. I look at it as my my side hustles are to be a hundred percent reinvested at all times. Yeah, continuously being a hundred percent reinvested. Let it grow. No, for sure. No, I'm excited for you, bro. Getting into uh, rental property, having renters in there, getting that mailbox money boy and you know and then off of our last uh podcast we were talking about how you would invest a certain amount of money you know both the top of our list was real estate so i'm on the same page with you i'm, I'm hoping around the same time frame you're looking at it because real estate is an investment vehicle that i want to get into so i'm working toward i'm um, trying to get enough capital up to be able to get into something um but yeah that that's going to be an amazing feeling right there dude but again, we're talking about the semi-passive or the, the active passive. Again, I don't know where I got that from, but yeah. um, you know, the work that you're doing right now to prepare yourself for that, I, I think that's gonna pale in comparison to the payoff that you get where you just kick back chilling and you got somebody sending you checks every month. Yeah, and not to be a being an economist here, because I definitely ain't no didn't go to school for that and didn't learn to textbook economist ways but for me it seems like, <laughs> um, 
to me, it's a good hedge on, on this inflation that we're dealing with, right? So last time I checked, we're dealing with almost 7% inflation in this country. So sitting money into a savings account right now, it's not the most ideal way for me. And now I'm looking at it. So, um, you know, when, when things are inflated, um, rent goes up, um, you know, just like home prices go up, go up. So it's not so much the, the, the month to month money that I'll be making on potentially on a rental property that I'm looking forward to is that consistent growth. Because you know, as if you look at any charts with mortgage rates or not mortgage rates, but mortgage uh, values, they tend to they tend to track up just like the S and P five hundred. Over sure. time, they tend to track up. So, so you know, it's a it's a great long term uh, investment for me and my family. How I'm looking at it, yeah. um, and based on the data that I'm looking for looking to towards. And I mean, what you know, I, my kind of the things that help me um, kind of soothe my mind when it comes to uh, taking that leap and putting money into a place solely for somebody else to live in for me to create some passive income is like well. Worst case scenario, we have another mortgage crash like 2007, 2008, right. and home values drop considerably. To me, that it may take a hit on your net worth or your ego, whatever the, the, the case may be when it comes to money. Yeah. Folks still need places to live. I always still, rent, just because the value dropped considerably, that don't mean the, um, the rentability dropped. Um, so that for me, and with me coming into it, it's not no, I'm not trying to buy it fix it up and flip it. So it's not like a, the 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 day to day uh, kind of like this, a stock portfolio, the day to day uh, value of it doesn't really make doesn't really matter much to me. It's yeah. the long term trajectory, the long term trends that I'm looking forward to. It's, the, it's something that I'm trying to 35 years old now. Um, that's something I'm trying to reap the benefits off of when I'm 65, potentially, right. you know, yeah. or, or even maybe someday my kids can re reap the benefits off of the same address. Um, and so, uh, for me, I'm not really caring or con concerned with, uh, I guess the day-to-day -day values, yeah. uh, or value of, of the property more so just the fact that it can stay occupied with a tenant and, and you yeah. know, continue to pay my, pay my mortgage or provide me some type of revenue. Yeah. It's crazy. And to your point, it's like where you get your comfort from when it comes to investing in real estate, the example that you just gave 35 right now. You want to still be eating off that when you're 65. Like, what do you think that, and you don't have to talk about the area that you're looking at or anything like that as far as real estate investment, but you know, you think 30 years ago, what the housing market value was. Just go off of that data alone. Right. It, I mean, it, I so saying long term, yeah, that this is going to be a good investment. And to your point, some of the homes I'm looking at are well over 30 years. They still standing. Yeah. And the, the what the people bought it for 30 years ago, pennies. Because, you know, obviously some right. like Zillow and Redfin and some of these different uh, sources, you can kind of look at some of those previous uh, sales prices. I'm like, man, they yeah. ate. They ate. I mean, That's look cool. at what values have done in the last decade. Yeah. Look at the values have done since the pandemic started. Look, yeah, I was going to say in the last few years. Unreal. Man, so, yeah, I think that's important, you know, when you talk about where you find your comfort from doing your research so you are comfortable going into whatever vehicle you're going to invest in. I know we're kind of talking about some things we did in our last podcast, but I think that's really important, though. And then the other thing, tying it into what we're talking about now, as far as the overall goal that we're trying to bring to this podcast or to just, you know, how we operate in life is financial peace not having to worry about money ever again. And from what I've seen in my research, people that have um, made an extremely high net worth, they have multiple streams of income. So that's where the reselling piece of it comes into. That's where, you know, the real estate investment uh, can come into to add to your portfolio. Um, and I know you mentioned we're going to talk also about content creation, because that's something else that we're looking to kind of get into. Um, and for me, there's a couple of different reasons. I, I do like the fact that I can record a video and put it on a platform where anybody can access it, anybody can see it. Um, and the second piece it, is, of course, going to be monetization. You get to that point. It's another stream of income. So I think for both of us, all of last month, throughout all of January has been busy, busy because we're learning a lot. Uh, we're trying to, you know, the reselling piece of it. 
we've been talking a lot about real estate and we've been creating content or mainly on YouTube, we've been trying to put out videos and, and trying to start getting recognized there. So if you want to talk about that, there's a lot we can go over. Yeah, yeah. So the next, the, the, as Justin just mentioned, mentioned um, another thing we've been doing is, is a side hustle. And, and right now it's all investment of our time yep. and our resources. Cause obviously it's not a, a, a side hustle that's going to guarantee and, or, uh, grant you, you know, income for most people uh, right off the bat. And that's our content creation. So uh, my family, we started a gaming channel. So we, we noticed my wife and my kids, we, we tend to game together. And uh, so why not kind of share that moment or share those those experiences with with everybody, with, with the world? So in the last month, month of some change, we, we've kind of thrown out 29 videos. So we've been putting in work, making thumbnails, creating editing videos and and it's been quite the journey and it's been something that i've learned a ton about i've always said and I, I know i told you this multiple times jay flu is that i i'm not that creative right and that it started to i started to really challenge my uh that notion because i'm sitting, yeah. I'm sitting making thumbnails i'm editing I'm, i got ideas like okay i can do this yeah. i can do that and that's when it's, it's weird uh, that that creative bug done, done bit me yeah. So now, now I'm kind of looking forward to that, and I'll, I'll quick plug. And so I also have another um, channel that I'm gonna start here soon. It's gonna be plugging more kind of uh, uh, some of my finances and some of the different side hustles, kind of tracking my journey on kind of how I'm approaching that. But um, yeah. it's kinda, it's kind of inspiring that you can you can do something or learn something. You can or you can you can have a job or a side hustle. You can then make content and uh, off of capturing what you've learned or do or the journey you, you are on with that side hustle and make money off of that yep. and then you can make money talking about you monetizing and making money off of the side hustle that you worked that's to me yep. is 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 a is, is crazy how many different ways in 2022 we can yeah. flip a dollar dude to me. so so many ways and um yeah going back to your channels and going back to your statement about you know not being creative i think that when you're preparing any type of content because you're putting it out for i mean who knows who's gonna see it but that's like your baby you you want that to be polished you want you know some type of theme through it all that type of stuff so I, i've seen from you with the thumbnail creation to some of the edits that you start to put into the videos like yeah you can get creative for sure um but i mean the other thing is for content creation it's always amazed me and again it took me a while to even get started putting any content out but to your point you can you can literally there is an audience for pretty much anything so if you have a interest or a hobby or a passion or whatever that is if you just push record um and it doesn't have to be you have you know have to have this uh high-end camera or anything people are people are doing this off of their phone I, I saw that there was some um there was some chick that was just recording off her iphone and she hit big and had over a million subscribers now that's not going to be something that's that's not the norm whatsoever but uh, i think that shows you if you're interested in creating any type of content if you're passionate about something and you just want to share it i think youtube is a great platform for that the monetization is going to come later on down the line but if you just have a passion for it i think that's the um the right heart to start out with but um yeah it's a lot of fun and, and you you definitely learn a lot yeah I'm, I'm learning a ton with it right now yeah and in worst case scenario for me and, and it is the best definitely an investment of my time um but the worst case scenario for me is that and this is not a bad worst case scenario for me at all is that no monetization comes but i now got documented uh moments with my babies that we can share yeah. memories that we can cherish for for years to come uh, for sure. little silly things that we said on, on on recording or um me you know chasing kids in the background or we or some uh, or one of our videos i'm cooking my kids are playing and i can hear myself because i'm watching the video the live while they're playing i can hear me uh, uh banging on the stove like you know stirring stirring stuff up and i'm like man that sounds janky but but at the end of the day it's, real, that's, though. it's relatable yeah it, you know I, 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 family gaming channel you're gonna hear 
a six-year-old come in at lunchtime saying, hey, it's 1201. It's it's one minute past lunchtime. Yeah. You're you gonna hear those things in our in our content. I think that's what makes it original to us. Yeah. Uh, the G Squad family and G Squad yeah. gaming family. And so but yeah, let's let's go ahead. Let's pitch some of your some of your content. I know you got some uh you got some bangers out there, man. With the Yeah, the, I mean I'm 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 trying to get some stuff out there. Um yeah, you know, I kind of when I started my channel it just started kind of an introduction to myself and what I'm passionate about. And so going back to the financial freedom aspect, it's, it's a lot revolving around that, but then that's broken off into different things. Uh, so, I mean, if you don't know already, um, I'm a technical recruiter. I've been in that industry for a while. So I've worked with some bigger names like Amazon, uh, for a couple of years, I've worked with a lot of different tech companies, but the experience I've gotten from that I'm seeing is, extremely valuable or it's something that a lot of people request um from the eyes of a recruiter when you're talking about how to build build a resume out or you're talking about how to prepare for uh different types of interviews i mean that's something that's my day-to-day -day that i took for granted that a lot of people just don't really know how to do or maybe they learned uh, a way that wasn't the best way to do it and so i've talked to a lot of people about that since i put some of those videos out uh, i helped one of my buddies um just last week uh, he's in the construction industry and he was trying to get his resume put together and start looking for some different jobs but didn't know where to start so i just sat on a facetime with him we went through everything and got him built out a solid resume that boy about to be ceo somewhere in a minute here because that gentleman was looking tight <laughs> but it's stuff like that uh, for my channel um you know i talk about the finance piece i talk about the side hustle piece reselling content creation um, and then I talk about from my professional work experience, uh, recruiting and different things that can fold into that. So, yeah, that's live. And don't forget to um, plug old just, just notify gaming. Oh, just notify gaming. Uh, yeah, you know what? That was something I just the past the past few weeks. So, just notify gaming is my second channel, um, and usually I'll just hop on there with uh, some friends um, with our mono course. Killer Joe, who we talked about, Zach Lowry, we talked about. We'll hop on there, usually running like Fortnite, Call of Duty, stuff like that. But that's where I'll just put some of my gaming content. I need to get back onto that. And I, I actually just bought a PC. Why well, didn't just buy it? I, I had a PC for the last few weeks, but I just plugged it in maybe like two weeks ago. So I do need to start streaming, which I stream on Twitch. And then I'll take some of that content, break it up, and then put it onto my just notified gaming channel yeah no definitely and we'll, we'll definitely make sure that we um provide the links to g squad uh, gaming channel the just notified um main channel and you just notified gaming channel for it for uh, if anybody wants to kind of check out what our content's like outside of path to peculiar podcast uh we'll, we'll provide that down in the link so so let, let me ask uh ag since you started creating content what what piece of it do you find the most fun because there's a lot of things that go into i mean you got to go into you're streaming the content and then after that you're breaking down a video if you're editing it up you got thumbnail creation you got all of that what what's your favorite part so far and what's your least favorite part so far the, the favorite part so far surprising they got two favorites so i got tied for my favorites the first favorite has been watching my kids like the little um Cause like my wife, she she'll watch people game. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I've never really wa been into watching it until I started. We started streaming it, streaming, and so um, so I don't know what the normal like and subscribe or making this comment or making that comment. I don't. I don't know. I didn't know that normal stuff. Right. Even my kids because they didn't. They didn't watch it either. Only only really my wife watched it. Yeah, and so it's been watching them mainly. My middle child, um, kind of develop her own style or oh, she go at it. my other daughter develop their own style with how they want to go about it what they want to say the little the little jokes they crack yeah. um that's been kind of fun to watch and then uh sure. to, to kind of watch that that's that's been enjoyable for me and then surprisingly so probably you bought this because at first you know i just want to these lives up let that yeah. be that yeah it's been the editing that's the been the hit hidden surprise i didn't realize i would enjoy that creative <laughs> process that figuring out 
because we're using Adobe Adobe Premiere Pro. Yeah. There's a lot of buttons. It's a lot. So we're trying to figure out what to do and how to do it. And then and then so now I'm in a phase where I would I'll have a vision of what I'm trying to do, what I would like to do, but it's the the research and actually learning how to implement it is the difficult part. But I'm I'm in that journey and I'm learning um right now. So that's yeah. that's been my favorite part. Which which what's been your favorite part about the content creation? Yeah, that's that's crazy that you mentioned that. The the editing is definitely the most time consuming piece of content creation by far. Uh, but to your point, I, I like editing and I like it because you have a vision in your mind. And then once you film it and when you start going through it and when you see it starting to actually develop to turn into a usable piece of content, you're like, hey, this junk, this is this isn't bad right here. We can go ahead and throw this up. So I like the editing piece of it, but the part the part that I don't like about editing and in my videos, a lot of them are just talking head videos. So when I have to go through and watch myself stumble through sentences and just stumble through basic words that I say every day, I start hating myself a little bit. Like, bro, what is wrong with you? But that's the part where I'm like, that that's probably my least favorite part. And the other thing is the thumbnails. I always forget to pose for a thumbnail while I'm recording. So then I have to go back and pose for it to then put it back onto my video after I've already uploaded it. Yeah. That's wow. And so what I what I did with mine, a little trick is put the put me and the kids and the, and the, and the wife all behind the little green screen. Took some little quick pictures with the iPhone. Yeah. Like you, you'll see on our on my thumbnails, we got the same pictures. <laughs> or you know what I'm saying. On, on all the thumbnails, but I'll be trying to reuse some of mine, bro. I'll be trying to reuse some yeah. of mine, dude. I, I, it's try to, the volume that we're throwing up some of these videos. We gotta, man. I gotta, I gotta pump those things out like every, you know, yeah, like yeah. five minutes, five minutes max on the thumbnail. Yeah. That's probably about what I spend. But uh, but it just notified we have forty one minutes on this on on one. episode three. Easy. Let's go. Light. Let's light. Yeah, we can wrap this thing up and kind of and start preparing and thinking about what we're doing for episode four since we'd have made it past one, two, and now we on three. Yeah, and further than, further than uh, we're we're now podcasters now. This is this is official so. now. Yeah. Three three episodes. We'll get better and better. Yeah, so stick with us. Yeah, no, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, you know, if anybody watched this point, appreciate y'all tuning in. We're always thinking. Well, honestly. We talk every day anyway, so we're always coming up with new content ideas that we can just talk about or new topics we can talk about. But if there's anything specific that somebody might want to hear from from us, let us know in the comment section. Um, and we'll definitely you know bring that up in, in the next episode. But no, other than that, uh, again, for my channel, if you want to follow me personally, it's uh, just notified two words and then I have just notified gaming. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, man, I uh I've enjoyed it. Right. And so that definitely, and so if, if you want to see some of our family gaming content on the side, it's like I said, it's gonna be G Squad Gaming, two words. Uh we our it's a blue logo. Ours should come up first when you search it on YouTube. I think it's because we're pumping out content uh like no like no other. And so like I said before, all these um all the links to our pages will be in the description so you can be easy for you to get to. And uh, again, we appreciate you guys being on and, and watching to this point. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button, and subscribe to the Path Peculiar uh, cha uh, YouTube channel if you haven't already. And uh, we appreciate y'all. Hmm. We out. Look, that boy, YouTuber. All right, y'all. <laughs> YouTubers. <laughs>